Okay, it's the end of the year 2015. Now let's go uh, for a rundown and uh, take a look at uh, some of uh, Nikon's current cameras and some that uh, are not current, but the only ones that I can recommend. Now I have in front of me D7100, Nikon D750, Nikon D810, Nikon D700, Nikon D3. What have I not included here that currently exists? None of the Nikon D3000 or D5000 series cameras. Why? Those are cheaper cameras. I only have a limited amount of money. Wouldn't that be a good option? Yes and no. Mostly no. Why not? Because it's a cheaper camera, it's actually more expensive. What the hell does that mean? It's a cheaper camera, it's more expensive. It means that, while it's a cheaper camera, Camera, yes, obviously so. It can only use G series Nikkor lenses, which are mostly plastic construction and are unquestionably more expensive. So while you're spending less on the camera, you're going to spend a lot more on lenses. Now, any photographer on earth will tell you, not my opinion, belief, or conviction, that all the money goes into lenses, not the camera. Well, I only want a cheap little camera with a lens or two then it's okay to make, make a recommendation like a Nikon D5500 or D5200, but I still wouldn't make it because you don't know at what point in time you plan on expanding your photography, your lenses can carry over to your next camera, in which case I would have to recommend a Nikon D7100. Uh, now, Nikon D7000 currently is running about three and a quarter, 350, a yeah, very good use condition, but it doesn't step to the value of a Nikon D7100, which is currently $480. Nikon factory refurb, Nikon factory refurbished, new, like used, with a limited 90-day warranty. Uh, currently, like from Kamita Camera, I think Adorama is out of them, thanks to me making such a strong recommendation on them. This has access to 40 years plus worth of lenses that the Nikon D3000 and 5000 series cameras cannot use. And these lenses are awesome, they're cheap, they're mostly made in Japan, and they will basically last forever. They're awesome, they're cheap, and they're bulletproof. That is why I cannot recommend a dinky. What's a dinky? D3000 series, D5000 series Nikon. Because the camera's cheaper, but it needs to chew on more expensive lenses. It does not have access for use of 40 years worth of awesome, cheap, Japanese-made lenses. And that is why a slightly more expensive camera is a lot cheaper. Okay? Understand that logic because it is irrefutable. Um, next in the series, one would say, well, where's the Nikon D7200? What's the difference between it and the D7100? D7100 has a Toshiba sensor. It really does have dreamy output compared to the D7200, which has a Sony sensor. It is a little bit more expensive. I do consider it a poor value. Uh, it does have a better buffer than a D7100. It does have... Uh, Better uh, high ISO performance than Nikon D7100. That does use a Sony sensor. It has flatter output, irrespective of the SNR firmware and the 80 converters and the Nikon D7200. However, at roughly a bit over $1,000, depending on what the sale is uh, on any given day, for another $1,400, it is a far, 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 far wiser choice to purchase an Nikon D750. And you're saying, well, you're only recommending the cameras that you have here. Why are you, uh, you know, you can't necessarily say, I've owned them all. I've used them all. I've owned them all. I'm not giving my, uh, trying to project my personal opinions, beliefs, and conjectures rather to be helpful for you and make the best choice, get the best bang for your buck. Obviously, it is the case that if you need high ISO performance and a better buffer and better low light performance, Spend an extra $250 to $400, depending on the sale and whether it's USA, mar USA warranty or gray market, uh, which is Asian, by the way. USA warranty and gray market are the same thing. The only difference is lack of a USA warranty, okay? In which case, spend a few hundred dollars more and get an Nikon D750. For a few hundred dollars more, you're making a world of difference. It is sometimes the case, regardless of whether it's cameras or cars or something else, that if you spend just a wee bit more, you'll get a whole lot more. And that is definitely the case why I cannot recommend, under any circumstances, really, under any circumstances, currently, under given prices, uh, whether there's a sale or not a sale on the 7200 or the 70, uh, D, is D750, that I can recommend an Icon D7, uh, D7200. So, that's why it's not included here. I don't have it. I don't recommend it. I have used it, yes. And uh, it's not a recommendation that I can make under any circumstances. Being objective and or subjective, it doesn't matter. I can't make the recommendation. 
Okay, that's not to say it's not a good camera. It's just not that good of a value. I mean, if you can spend a few hundred dollars more and get a D750. Okay, D750, incredible high ISO performance, great buffer, great sports action, incredible low light uh, camera. And crowd, jump in the bottom of a well and shoot pictures without a flash at 3 a.m. Not literally, but it's an incredible uh, high ISO performer. Um, next, um, the next step up, why don't I have a recommendation or have in front of me an Icon D800 or D800E? Well, I've owned both of those cameras and I can't recommend them unless you can find a killer deal on a used Nikon D800 or D800E. Um, they're not in current production. But I can't recommend them unless you can find an incredible deal on one. Once in a while that pops up. But currently, uh, the D810 gray market is fluctuating around $2,000, sometimes at $2,000, but mostly it's about $2,200 or $2,300. 36 megapixel camera, great buffer, sports action, portraiture, uh, no anti-aliasing filter, perfect uh, for uh, landscape, portrait, perfect for everything basically. The only thing that you're going to have an issue with is if you don't have a smoking fast computer and you're shooting in RAW, which of course you damn well better be shooting in RAW. If you're spending $3,000 on a camera, which is what full-blown retail on this is, actually full-blown retail is above that. But even if you're spending $2,000 or you're, sp you're buying this, not gray market warranty, but USA warranty and buying a Nikon a D810, and you're not shooting in RAW, then you just might as well be shooting yourself in the foot. It's not worth it. One thing that you'll have an issue with is workflow on the D810 if you don't have a smoking fast computer because the RAW files will chew your computer up and spit it out the other side. So you do need to have a smoking fast computer and hopefully some skills in Photoshop and uh, you know, uh, converting RAW files and working uh, with the RAW files at 36 megapixels uh, is a bit of a, uh, a bit of a pain. Yeah, that's about the best word to put for it. Um, top recommendation, I have a pair of Nikon D810s, incredible. Is it actually worth, um, depending on what you spend for it, say $2,300 gray market, $2,700 roughly right now, depending on where you get it from, USA warranty, $2,700, $2,800. Is it worth it? Yes, it is. Um, are the raw files a pain to work worth? work with? Yes, they are, but you can obviously crop the hell out of your shots with that 36 megapixel sensor. Um, no anti-aliasing filter, uh, which means it's awesome for landscape, sports, action, portraiture. And if you're making any money at all in photography, who gives a damn what it costs? Just buy the D810 and then write it off on your taxes. That is, if you can write it off on your taxes and then you're in the United States of America. Hooray! Um, <laughs> Um, also recommendations, back row, not current production. These are both Japanese manufactured cameras. These are the tanks, the, uh, the Sherman tanks, uh, they're the grenades of uh, DSLR technology. Um, now uh, both of these are 12 megapixel cameras. They're both uh, made in Japan, D700, Nikon D3. Um, incredible cameras. Um, now the D3 used to be uh, upwards of uh, mid $5,000. Um, it was spitting out perfect 20 by 30 prints back in 2000, late 2008, and it will do the same now. Workflow is very fast. 99% um, of you don't need anything larger than 12 megapixels. Technically, even 12 megapixels is a bit too much for what most people need. Not what you want, but what you need. Now, can you crop the heck out of your shots in RAW? Well, yes and no, but certainly no compared to an Nikon D7100, D750, or D810. So the question remains, why would you purchase an Icon D3? Well, it kind of is hard to find one that hasn't been heavily loved because uh, most Nikon D3s that are for sale have uh, been heavily used. They are professional grade cameras. Of course, all of these are electric wonder boxes. And uh, by that, since having used to repair cameras at great length in the past, inside each one of these is an enormous amount of parts so complex you wonder why any of them doesn't break down every month like a bad car because they literally are 10 pounds of stuff in a five pound bag each and every one of these is a uh, electronic wonder box they're just uh, jam-packed um, but the Nikon D3 is the toughest DSLR ever made by anybody Canon, Nikon, anybody else nobody holds a candle to the Nikon D3 it is incredible. Um, so the question remains now, here in 2015, 
is it worth it to spend $1,000, $1,200 on a camera like the D3 to 12 megapixel? And the answer is hell yes. I've owned a few of these. I currently own two, no, two of them. And uh, this is really where you can get some extraordinary money on a professional camera that is just, will just keep chugging and chugging and chugging and chugging. Now, the warning on either, both of these cameras, the D700 and Nikon D3, is that they are heavy as hell. They are tanks in the literal sense, and they are tanks in the figurative sense. They are darn heavy. I grew up on those, but some people that... Uh, I have no muscles at all. I've got no issues holding up either one of these cameras all day long. So anybody else that complains about it, I have no idea what is wrong with you. Um, the D700 is an infamous camera among professional photographers because it takes absolutely incredible pictures. What do I mean by that? The rendition off the sensor, which is a Matsushita sensor, i.e. Panasonic, uh, however it's processed the data converters and the firmware, it just makes these uh, color, color rich, saturation rich pictures that are just uh, divinely beloved. That's why the camera is such an incredibly hot seller. When someone has a Nikon uh, D700, they're rather amazed that it has, no, it has an output unlike anything Nikon has ever made before and certainly so ever since. Nobody has made anything that has the output and the color rich saturation and beauty of the Nikon D700. Whoa, that old camera, who would buy that? Well, I'll tell you what, pros that have all the money in the world and that write off anything on their taxes can buy whatever the hell they want, ask them why they still buy this old camera, okay? That should be a hint to you. That's what we call a hint. When a professional that can write any camera off on his taxes can buy whatever the hell he wants and still will never let go of that old Nikon D700 or that old Nikon D3, that is what we call telling you something. That is uh, uh, a hint, like a sledgehammer right over your head. Well, you could buy anything and you write it off on your taxes and money is no object, so why are you using that old Nikon D3? That's when the professional photographer will smile and look at you like you're a clueless idiot because that's exactly what you are. He knows something that you don't know, but I'm telling you right now what that is. So anyway, those are the only five cameras that I can currently recommend. Like I said, the exceptions exist and those exceptions would be if you can find like a used, uh, I cannot recommend the 600 or 610 at all unless you find it so stupid cheap that someone has temporary insanity and they're selling their Nikon D600 or D610 just, just stupid cheap. They just have temporary insanity and they're just selling it for peanuts. That's the only way I could ever recommend buying a Nikon D600 and D610. Unquestionably so, the losers of the Nikon world. D610 is still currently being made. Also, as the, is the case, but not in respect to the Nikon D600 and D610, but the 800 and the D800E are both exquisite cameras. They are still relatively expensive, and I necessarily cannot recommend them unless you can find them for stupid cheap prices. And that may happen in the beginning uh, or middle of... Uh, 2016, but Nikon really isn't going to roll anything out for the first half of next year except for the Nikon uh, D5 and possibly, possibly, a Nikon D850 or whatever they, whatever they plan to name it and it will be a, uh, a 40 megapixel plus, it'll, it'll probably be 50 megapixel camera and it'll be $3,500, $3,600 and it'll be absolutely absurd as far as workflow because the raw files will be so big that when you open up the compact flash card slot the compact flash card will jump out of the slot and choke you to death because the raw files are so large and you'll be laying on the floor gasping for air wondering how the hell you're going to process raw files that are so damn large when even a 12 megapixel camera will make exquisite 20 by 30 prints so then of course the question remains what the hell do you plan on doing with those huge raw files now if you need to crop the hell out of them make large prints there are a lot of advantages to a large megapixel camera but for 99 percent of you well maybe 90 to 95 percent of you you don't need it you think you want it and you probably do want it, but you sure as hell don't need it. So anyway, that's the lowdown. Top recommendations for general shooters, Nikon D7100. The only deficiencies that Nikon D7100 has is that it's not a high ISO performer, and if you want to crank it up for sports and action, it does not have an enormous buffer. But it is a steal. The output from the Toshiba sensor on the Nikon D7100, the fact that it could use 40 years worth of old, awesome Japanese uh, steel and aluminum, perfection
really cheap awesome lenses makes it a winner best bang for the buck period flat bar none cannot recommend the d7200 as i already told you spend 250 350 dollars more and get a nikon d750 next would be the nikon d810 now if you have all the money in the world and you're a photojournalist you're going to be asking about the camera that i don't have here yeah, but you don't be what those people aren't watching this video. Why? Because they know what the hell it is. That's the Nikon D4S. Incredible high ISO performance. Um, a good used one will run you about five thousand dollars. You already know about that. If uh, you're a photojournalist or someone shooting sports action, it's incredible low light IS, high ISO performance, and you're going to drop five thousand dollars in a camera, but it doesn't make a damn difference to you anyway. Because you're going to write it off on your taxes. You can also use it for portraiture. You could use it for everything. It's a workhorse. Um, however, it's still not made anywhere near as good as the Nikon D3 is as far as its durability. But you're not going to buy these cameras to hammer nails with. So what does it matter ultimately anyway? You should have insurance on any camera that you buy. So anyway, that's the rundown. I've used them all. I've owned them all. And... Uh, I have left out my uh, subjective beliefs, opinions, and uh, convictions one way or the other out of this, and I'm trying to make a best recommendation for you based upon A, what you shoot, and B, what your budget is, so you get the best bang for your buck. That's what this video is about, okay? It's not about me pimping or shilling. I have no connection to Nikon at all, nor to any camera store. I want to help you. Thank you very much. I hope you liked the video. If you like it, so you can drop me a buck or two, or you can go tell me to jump off a cliff, or stick my head in the toilet, or uh, whatever the hell you like, whatever makes you happy, as long as I was helpful. Thank you very much. Lux Ivritas. That's Latin, by the way. Thank you. Bye.